hey guys uh, now we are going to look at the various phases of dmvpn right so uh, now to understand phase one uh, there are three phases to start with there are three phases of dmvpn and i'm using eigrp as my routing protocol right for phase one there is uh, no requirement of any special config so in this phase all the traffic from spoke to spoke should go through the hub right this allows you to control what traffic from one spoke should go to another spoke so everything you know let's say r2 is talking to r3 the traffic would go through r1 right um, and uh, how do you check that we can check that we are on r2 right now right let me probably clear my screen right so r2 so let's say i'm on r2 right now let's check the uh, show ip route yeah so if you check the show ip route of r1 sorry r2 you see that uh, the next hop for every of the other network is 192.168.1.1 which is my r1 right you see it appearing everywhere the next hop for any of the network is 192.168.1.1 we can also check it by doing a trace route so let's say we are trying to ping my r4 we do a trace and you see that first the packet has gone to 1.1 and from there it was sent to 1.4 right so that's basically my phase one right well uh, it depends i mean i wouldn't say this is bad uh, because if, if you want such kind of a network where you want the control to be done at r1 you want to monitor every single traffic going between the spokes you can use our phase one right but I wouldn't say it is very efficient because every time a packet has to go from let's say these are the locations now this is Delhi let's say a packet has to go from Delhi to New York it will have to go to Dubai and then from there it has to go to New York right so you see that it's not very efficient right so that uh, now to solve this we have phase two right I would say it's a efficient it's a better way than phase one uh, you know when it comes to efficiency so in this phase you would uh, like uh, the spoke to spoke traffic to go directly right and it would not go uh, from the hub and in order to accomplish this we need to uh, do a small change in the routing so what we do as you saw here in the phase one you saw that the next stop right for every of the network was r1 now why is this happening the reason is let's say we are talking about r2 and R2 is trying to advertise its network which is 10.2.0 and 172.16.2.0 to the rest of the network so what it does is it sends a routing update because it is a multicast update it will send it to R1 right so when it sends when this uh, update uh, is sent to R1 the next stop is 192.168.1.2 which is the address here right but now uh, so basically when I, what I meant is when this update goes from here to here the next stop is R2 but when the update because R1 is further going to send that update back to the network so when R1 sends that update to say R3 and R4 the next stop is no more R2 it, it R1 becomes the next stop and that's why you see in the routing table everywhere you have the next stop defined as R1 to prevent this from happening we, we can um, you know prevent we can uh, change the next hop we can tell r1 to not change the next hop right and that can be done by a small configuration on r1 so let's go back to r1 and do that right so let's go to the tunnel one and we will have to put no ip next hop self eigrp 100 right there you go we did the change we told r1 to not change the next stop right so now if you go and uh, see the routing table for r2 what do you see show ip route there you go the next stop of uh, 10.2.2 and 10. sorry the next stop of 10.3.3 .3 has changed it is now the next stop for reaching r3 is 192.168.1.3 which is the tunnel for r3 right and for r4 it has changed earlier it was you know as you see as a screen scrolled earlier you see that the next stop was always r1 but now it has changed so by 
doing a small change in the ESJP protocol, we were able to do this, right? So now let's say if I do a trace route to 10.3.3, it would still, uh, um, you see, okay, you see that it's just one hop away, right? It directly, the packet was sent directly to 1.3, 1, 1 the tunnel where, you know, uh, the tunnel of R3. And we did not have two hops like we saw earlier in case of phase one. So I would say it's a bit little efficient, right? Now the third one is uh, uh, the fastest, right? And uh, here we are not going to use. Uh, so let me remove that. Let me do remove whatever I did earlier. I did the next hop configuration self next hop. Let me remove this. So in phase three, what we do is we um, we use something called as NHRP redirection, right? So this is how it works. We configure NHRP redirection on R1 and say that, hey, um, okay, so when, when you configure NHRP redirection on R1, this is how it works. So let's say R4 wants to talk to R2, right? Uh, but obviously, because in the routing table, we have R1 to be the next stop, like we showed earlier, the packet will reach R1, but because NHRP redirection is configured, right? The first time R1 will forward the packet to R2, but it will also send an update to R4 saying that, hey, uh, next time you want to reach R2, do it directly. And it will send the, um, it, it will basically create a NHRP cache in R4 and it will update the cache saying that, okay, if you want to reach this network, use this IP directly and don't come to me, right? So that's basically what happens here, right? So we can test that. So in order to do that, we need to um, just uh, configure NHRP redirect on my R1 and I have to also configure NHRP shortcut on my uh, other routers, on my, uh, this router, right? So let's do that. So let's, I'm already on R1. Let me put redirect over here. Let's go to R2. Right, on my R2, I'm going to configure uh, NHRP shortcut, right? There you go, that's done. On my R3 probably, let's do that again. There you go, that's done. On my R4. Okay, we did that, right? So we have configured NHRP redirect. Now let's test the same thing. Let's probably ping from R3 to R4, right? So uh, maybe let's trace it. Let's trace 10.4.4.4. There you go. Okay, the first time it used it used two steps. Let's do it again. Okay, now you see. Earlier it took two hops. Now it's just one hop, right? When it the first time when you did, you know it went to R1, but then R1 you know gave or updated the NHRP of R4 saying that hey. Next time you want to reach R2 or R in this case, okay, uh, next time you want to reach uh, R4, right, uh, uh, use this particular IP. And that's how, you know, we were able to accomplish in just one single hop. You can look at uh, how the LHRP looks. So you can see here, this entry has been added recently, right. Um, it says that you know to reach 10.4. Because we did a ping to 10.4.4, it says if you want to reach 10.4.4, use this, you know, public IP. Next time you don't have to come to me. So R1 is, you know, updating the NHRP cache, and you can see that uh, show IP route would still, you know, have uh, my R1 to be my next stop, but the NHRP uh, cache would take precedence, and uh, this would be followed and not the show IP route, right? So, yeah, so that was phase three, right? So we did phase three as well. Um, what do we do next? Uh, um, okay, so, um, yeah, so the last part, I think what we could do is we will uh, uh, set up the encryption, right? So what we did now is just DMVPN, right? But we did not have uh, the encryption set up uh, which means the IPsec part, right, was not set up. So what we are going to do now is we are going to uh, put the encryption as well on all the routers. It's going to be 
one single set of commands. So that's going to be pretty straightforward. Let's see that. Right. I'm going to explain for one of the router, then we are going to paste it on all of them. So this is my R1. You see that uh, we are doing a phase, uh, just to um, you know repeat what I'm doing here. We have just configured tunnels. We have just configured connectivity. We have just done DM VPN, right? But the VPN is just about connecting private networks over public network, right? And uh, if you want security, if you don't want your data to be sent in clear text, then you have to do IPsec on it. And that's what we are doing right now. So this is just IPsec part over the DM VPN tunnels, right? So you see, this is the phase one, which we did earlier in my earlier videos, you can refer, it's pretty much the same. You have uh, some pre-shared keys, you have the three days, MD5, group two for the Diffie-Hellman, and uh, we are gonna use a pre-shared key. I'm using 0.0, .0 network because uh, it, it might be dynamic IPs, right? And then I'm using a transform set, which is my phase two. I'm using mode transport, right? Because I'm doing GRE over IPsec here. Uh, which would uh, help me reduce shrink my packet size by using more transport it would basically remove those duplicate headers right which we discussed earlier and the next part being uh, I'm using IPsec profile here right we talked about this uh, I mean by using this we can prevent using crypto maps right we don't actually have to use crypto maps anymore we can use the profile uh, you know attach my face to to the profile right and then I open the tunnel and uh, I uh, attach my profile to it, right? That's simple. So this is the configuration which goes on R1 now. Let's do the same thing on R1, R2 as well. Okay, let's probably fetch it, give me a minute. There you go, R2, you got to have that on R3, and the last one which is my R4. That's it. Now we have set up a complete secure tunnel, right? So you can, let's say we ping, uh, let's do a ping from R2 to R4, right? Let's do that. Ping 10.4.4.4. There you go, the ping works. And uh, show crypto, isacamp, SEA, right? You can look at all the active tunnels in my phase one, right? For my phase two, what, what was the change? We have to just do IPsec. There you go. So the packets, you know, they are, uh, this basically tells that the phase two is also working. You can see the packets encapsulated and decrypting as well. Right, so that is it guys. So uh, we have set up a complete DMVPN solution with the, um, you know, uh, uh, and we have used IPsec on that as well. So, um, that's uh, pretty much what covers uh, uh, what I wanted to, uh, that's something which I wanted to cover in this entire video, right? Thank you for watching.